There's chaos tonight at number 10, with four of Boris Johnson's most senior advisers leaving their jobs. This leader of the opposition, a former director of public prosecutions, Mr Speaker, will say that he spent most of his time prosecuting journalists and failing to prosecute Jimmy Savile, as far as I can make out, Mr Speaker. They were part of his inner circle, with one of his longest-serving members of staff, Manira Mirza, the head of policy, resigning after criticising him for implying Sakir Starmer, a former director of public prosecutions, was personally responsible for allowing Jimmy Savile to escape justice for sexually abusing children. Tonight, the three other aides who are stepping down, Jack Doyle as Director of Communications, Chief of Staff Dan Rosenfield and Mr Johnson's Principal Private Secretary Martin Reynolds, have all been implicated in the controversy over lockdown parties. With the very latest developments, here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, and a warning, this film contains flashing images. Boris Johnson managed to keep a Blackpool tram on track today. Yet it's not clear tonight where his leadership is really going. Well, well, that. that went well. Thank God for that, the Prime Minister said. He might need prayers to create a sense of stability in his government, though. The communications director, Jack Doyle, walked out of his job tonight. A major role in any number 10, but the message had gone badly wrong. The chief of staff, Dan Rosenfield, who was brought in to create order is on his bike and going too. The third exit, Martin Reynolds, the Prime Minister's senior civil servant who invited around 100 people to a garden party. And the explosive fourth exit, his friend and political confidant of more than 10 years, Munira Mirza, chief of ideas, Boris's brain, one former colleague told me. She's not just gone, but has left dynamite in her wake slamming the Prime Minister's comments linking the leader of the opposition to Jimmy Savile early this week. She wrote it was an inappropriate and partisan reference to a horrendous case of child sex abuse, adding, despite my urging, you did not apologise for the misleading impression you gave. This is what he'd managed to say. I'm talking not about uh, the leader of the opposition's personal um, record when he was... Uh, when he was DPP, uh, and, and, I, and I totally understand that he had nothing to do uh, personally with those decisions. I was making a point about um, the, his responsibility for the organisation. Leader of the opposition, a former director of public prosecutions, Mr Speaker, say that he spent most of his time prosecuting journalists and failing to prosecute Jimmy Savile, as far as I can make out, Mr Speaker. An untrue allegation that appalled victims and some MPs on the Prime Minister's own side. Keir Starmer was the boss of the Crown Prosecution Service when Jimmy Savile was not charged. But Sir Keir had no individual involvement in the case. And unusually, the Chancellor was happy to show a public split. Being honest, I wouldn't have said it, and I'm glad that the Prime Minister clarified what he meant. Who, as well as grappling with the economy, is grappling with the government's reputation. Hi, Laura. How are you? He lives and works under the same roof where lockdown gatherings took place. For the record, Chancellor, you knew of nothing of any of these gatherings, even one that happened outside that window. You knew nothing. As I said, I, it, I, people think I'm standing out here looking outside that window. I spent half my time in the Treasury as, uh, as well as working here. But what I was focused on at that time, you know, as were many people, is making sure that we could help the country through a period of enormous anxiety. You walked into the Cabinet room at the end of Boris Johnson's birthday celebration. Did that not happen? You were asking me about something that happened over two years ago and I walked into a, a meeting with a group of people, as, as I do all the time. Do you worry, though, that this has damaged the public's confidence in the government that you're part of? Yes, I think it has. And, you know, I can appreciate people's frustration. And I think it's now the job of all of us in government, all politicians, to restore people's trust. Some of your colleagues want the Prime Minister to go. If that were to happen, would you run to replace him? No, that's, that's not what I'm focused on, and of course... It's not no, my question, would you do it? No, Some of your colleagues I mean, want you to. Well, that's, that's very kind of, 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 them, of them to suggest that, but what I think people want from me and what your viewers will want from me is to focus on my job. Mm. The Prime Minister has my full support. But support for the bigger of this double act may not last forever. Chaotic days are one thing, a loss of credibility quite another.